Warning, this video is for educational purposes only. Do not try any of the techniques you're about to see without explicit indemnity or permission. In most cases, just carrying these tools can prove intent and result in serious criminal charges. Proceed at your own risk. Yo, hey, what up guys? It's Mike from Hacks to Hack. I'm here in my hotel room and figured this would be a perfect opportunity to showcase some of my physical penetration testing gear. And I've got this door between rooms here that, you know, it's not a high security door by any means. It's just got some cheap hardware you'd find at like your local hardware store, but it might give the perfect demonstration for a few of these tools and techniques. Let's go through them. So first up, let's go over latch slipping. So this is my personal favorite because it's so simple, so easy. You can do it with a wide variety of different tools. And once you see this in the wild, once you see this on a door, you notice it everywhere. And it's, uh, it's pretty simple. So what you're gonna use is a hook or your latch lip tool. A lot of times people now are branding them and selling them for a premium. In reality, it's just a little metal hook and you can get them for a few bucks online. Uh, I think I went to Harbor Freight and picked up a pack of like five or so of them. You got a wide variety of different hooks here. Pretty much a straight 90 degree or a longer one works best. And uh, hey, let me show you how you use it. So again, this is not a high security door, but it'll at least show you the concept here. Any gap that you see within the door is an opportunity to fit some sort of tool in there and see if we can slip it. It's called latch slipping because this is your latch, right? And you're gonna try to slip it closed. I'm sorry, focus in for that for you. So the idea here is to take your pointy tool, hook onto the latch within the reservoir, close it yourself and you can see the door just slips right free. And stick our little tool in there, kind of spin it and push the door right open. So we're bypassing the handle altogether, slipping the latch and popping the door open. If you look at it one more time, that entirety of this door is held closed by that one little piece of metal. That can be pushed in pretty readily. Boom. Let's try it from the back side just to give you another perspective. Let me lock this up here. So this time we're gonna reach around the back side of the lock or the back side of the latch. Excuse the motorcycle there, boom, and pull it open. You notice we didn't touch the door handle to lock at all. We're focusing on the latch. Pulling that. Let me see if I can really get it. It's hard multitasking here, but grab it. Compress it. Pull it. All right, next up, we're gonna go into latch shimming. So similar concept, but instead of taking a hook and grabbing that latch and compressing it, we're gonna take something like this. This is mica shim paper. It's super flexible, super kind of uh, slick. You can, see, you can hear it, you can see kind of the shine on it. This one's been worn down a little bit, but we're coming to pack something like this. You can get them online. You can, I think mine's from China, but. What's cool about this technique is you can use any little bits of plastic. So this is my personal favorite. I've, you know, I've said that a couple times, but all these are my favorite. Just cut off an old Mountain Dew bottle. And you can see it already has a nice curve, which we'll showcase in a second. But it's that same sort of flex flexible plastic material that we're looking for. It's got rigidity, but it also curved and moved and adapts. Let me show you what I mean. So again, similar concept. We're looking for that gap in the door, anywhere we can fit our plastic shim through. Gonna kind of curve it around. You can see it, it works its way through, kind of compresses that latch and creates a barrier that slips and allows us to push that door right open. This one is significantly harder when you're looking at a latch from the reverse side. And, you know, sometimes in the wild, you're gonna see them this way, or you're gonna see them facing towards you. If you see it facing towards you, it's easy to kind of slip it in, like I showed you previously. If it's the other way, you gotta kind of try to Get around in front of it. Pull it back towards you. See if I can do it. This is a beat up shim. I'm doing this one handed. It's kind of an excuse. Oh, there we go. See how it's in between there? Now, this door without touching or turning the handle just pop right open. I figure I'd show you guys one more time with the renowned pop bottle. You can see where this, this uh, curvature of the bottle kind of helps here. A little too easy. One-handed. Jimmy. 
be surprised how many servo rooms it actually works on. All right, next one, another one of my favorites. This is one you probably heard of by now if you're researching this stuff for penetration testing. It's the under door tool. Essentially, it's a long piece of metal here with an attached string. It allows you to reach up under the door, hence the name, grab the handle and open it from the inverse side. So the idea here is that for a lot of these doors, especially you know, in commercial buildings, you're gonna have this type of handle. And I think it's here for different accessibility reasons, but for the most case, they're always gonna open from the reverse side. So if we can get our hand in there with the tool and reach up and under it, we're gonna be able to pop that door nine times out of 10. So let me show you what it looks like from both sides. So with your tool, you create like a bow, use your two hands, stick it under the door, slide it through while holding onto your cable. So that's what you're gonna to torque pull and kind of move the tool up angle it and you hear it stack the door and you can kind of see the shadow hopefully that shows up on camera see where it's about handle the height and turn it put it around the handle and give this cable a nice little tug as you can see there in the shadow of the glass the handle's moving the latch is compressed we can open the door slide our tool back out and walk through let me show you from the back side. Push open, and you're through. This one's less of a technique and more of just an observation. So you want to look at the door for where your hinges are. A lot of the times these doors will actually be hinged wrong and these hinge pins will be on the outside of the door. In reality, it's pretty simple. You know, there's a hole here for a tool and with built in with a hammer or spring where you can pop it and send this pin right out. You do it to three pins on the door and you can pull it right out. And this is kind of harder to be covert about because you're banging away at those pins. But if you're in a setting where you're doing this after hours or noise constraints are an issue, it's an awesome way to just pop the door out, get in and close it up. A couple bonus here for you, similar to the ones we covered previously. These are the Zor tool. They come in two different thicknesses, kind of looks like a boomerang, big stick. But this is meant to bypass situations where you're usually able to shim the door, but uh, people are a little bit more security conscious and they put a little strike plate here around the door to keep you from you know tampering with it up close let me show you how this long angle tool kind of gets in there and gets past that there is no strike plate on this door particularly but we can imagine it's there and i'll show you what it does all right notice i won't compress the door handle just stick the tool in here again imagine a strike plate kind of leverage this back pull straight back so as that slipped i'm going to time it right and it helps when that strike plate is there, this tool kind of get caught here to keep it compressed. Boom. One final bonus I have for you is simply just an air pump. And these are oftentimes used more in the automotive industry if someone gets locked out of their car and you need to kind of pry open a, an automotive car to get the right tool in there and pull up the little lever. But uh, when you're working with doors, this is also great to kind of use to shimmy things around a little bit and give yourself a little, a little extra working space. So let me show you what I mean. So again, this is just a demonstration door and the gap that we have under here is pretty significant. But say it were smaller, you can only fit in a little bit. You can take an airbag, pump it up, and these are industrial strength. These have a lot of lifting power, so it'll get tight. But sometimes give you just that extra little bit of space you need fit a tiny tool into to say you know this gap was tight but uh not this loose right you could fit just the edge of your tool in there let me see if i can show you how it opens it up just a little bit you can hear the door creak and you can fit your tool in thanks for watching my physical toolkit demonstration a few different tools and tactics leave a like leave a comment let me know what you guys want to see next and stick around catch you later